Welcome to a Faithful God Podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Rotzel, and today on the show, we're going to talk about what to do when it seems like God isn't listening. So grab those earbuds and your favorite beverage and join me for today's show. Well, hey friend, happy Friday. I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful week. Give yourself a big pat on the back because you made it, my friend. Oh, it feels so good to make it to Friday, isn't it? Doesn't it? So listen, today on the show, we're going to talk about what to do when it seems like God isn't listening. I talk to community members, whether it's in the Grow Your Faith community or the Footprints of Inspiration community, um, everything that Faithful God Pat, uh, whoo, Schmidt, Faithful God Pat, God, Faithful God podcast community. Clearly I'm struggling here. So anyway, I talk to women all the time from all over the world who, you know, it, they're praying, they're praying, they're doing all the right things, right? They're getting into the Bible. Maybe you, you feel like you are uh, doing these exact same things, getting into the Bible, praying, staying in communication with God, right? Going to church, going to Bible study, serving in ministry. And yet no matter what you do, it seems like God isn't listening. Man, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to be patient in those times. So today I'm going to give you three things that I want you to do while you're waiting. But before we get started, what I want to remind you, my friend, is wherever you are listening, be sure to subscribe to the show. If you're watching on YouTube, give me a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And listen, last week we wrapped up our final session in the three-part series, uh, what was it? it? Unshackled faith. I had to think about that as I'm recording all these podcast episodes, but unshackled faith, rele- releasing unrealistic expectations to follow God. And last week, we really, really dug in to prayer. We t- took an entire episode to talk about some of the unrealistic expectations when it comes to prayer. If you haven't listened to those yet, be sure to tag those so you go back and listen to those episodes. And also last week we talked about um, Fearless Prayer, our brand new, my brand new free resource for you, learning how to, it's, it's actually Fearless Prayer, seven days to overcoming doubt and distractions to create a consistent prayer life. So if you haven't grabbed that freebie yet, make sure you hop on over and do that at fearless or excuse me footprints of inspiration.com slash fearless prayer so without any further ado my friends let's go ahead and get started with today's episode now i don't know about you but i am not a patient person at all and in this world we've got fast food right we don't want to have to wait for anything amazon gets us the orders in either a day or two at max i don't know about you but when i order from someplace else and i see that or you know that it takes a regular time quote unquote to to get something to me if i don't have it in two days i'm looking it up trying to figure out where it is and of course it hasn't even left the warehouse yet right (laughs) it just we live in this world of just really trying to uh, or excuse me you know it, that that gives us everything we need immediately right that instant gratification and so i'm no different i too struggle with that i am not a patient person at all but you know what happens what happens when god when when you're doing all the things right you're praying you're you're getting into the bible you're going to church you're going to bible study you're serving in ministry and yet what you're asking for is not happening. It seems like God isn't listening, like he's up there doing absolutely nothing and has no idea what you want, what you've been praying for, what you've been asking for. And um, it's frustrating, isn't it? It's hard and it's frustrating to wait on that when it feels like God is not listening at all. So today, like I said, I'm, we're going to go into three different powerful things that I really want you to understand in order to persevere during the waiting. So the first thing I want you to understand when it comes to thinking that God is not listening, right? That he doesn't even care about what's going on in your life. First thing I want you to understand is this, he is still working. You know, it's a lot like when we plant a seed, right? Spring comes, we plant some seeds and then we cover it up, cover it up with soil, right? From above the soil, from above ground where we are, we see absolutely nothing going on. But what's happening is those roots are growing, right? That that um, seed is starting to grow and the roots are growing, building this really good foundation so that when it does pop up and it's something we can see, 
then it's got that firm foundation to stand on. It's the same with us, my friends. We're sitting there waiting for him. We're thinking that nothing is happening, that he doesn't care about us or he's doing absolutely nothing about it. And yet, what's really going on or what, what, we, what we need to remember is that he's still working. Just because we can't see him doesn't mean he doesn't care. Just because we can't see him working doesn't mean he isn't working, working, right? We've got to remember that and stand on that when it feels like the waiting has gone on and on and on. You see, we serve an unchanging God. He's the same in good times and in bad. He's the same whether you see him working or not. Even when you don't see things going on in your life, when you feel stagnant and aren't moving forward or you feel like nothing is moving forward, he's still working. He hasn't changed. I love this Bible verse by, or excuse me, in Isaiah chapter 55, verses eight through nine. I'm gonna read to you from the voice translation. It says this, my intentions are not always yours and I do not go about things as you do. My thoughts and my waves are above and beyond you, just as heaven is far from your reach here on earth. Let me repeat that, my friend, because this is a powerful Bible verse. My intentions are not always yours, and I do not go about things as you do. My thoughts and my ways are above and beyond you, just as heaven is far from your reach here on earth. Just because you don't see him working, just because you think he isn't listening. That, my friend, is a full-on lie from the enemy, and it's so untrue. He's working, my friend. He hasn't forgotten about you. You just have to trust in that. Remember, we talk about this all the time in the community. Trusting God isn't a feeling. Trusting that he is still working, that he is still listening. It isn't a feeling, or excuse me, it isn't a feeling, my friend. It's a choice. And we have to choose to stand on that truth until our heart catches up with our faith. We have to choose to stand on that truth until we start to see what it is we've been praying for. We just finished this entire series, this three-part series I mentioned earlier on um, expectations, right? Those unrealistic expectations. And we have to understand that the expectations that we're going to always see the work that God is doing That's not true. That's an unrealistic expectation. His ways are not our ways. Our ways are not his ways. It's probably the better way to say that. And just because we don't see it doesn't mean that he's not working. Let go of that expectation that you're always going to see everything God is doing because that isn't true, my friend. Number two, what we've got to understand is that our timing is not God's timing, right? Thank, and thank goodness for that, right? God in all his mercy, God who knows what's best for us, right? The very man, the very being that created us knows what's best for us. And when we're praying for something and we're sitting here thinking, you know what? I'm ready. Come on, let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. And God is saying, no, no, no. I am not done preparing you yet. You see, he uses this time to prepare us, to shape us, to mold us into the very thing or to be ready for the very thing we've been praying for. He uses that time to align our thoughts with with his thoughts, right? Because so often we're praying for something that may not be good for us, right? What does Jeremiah 29, 11 teach us? That I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and to give you a future, not for harm, right? I didn't um, say that in the right, in the right order. But at any rate, that we know that he knows what's best for us. And so when we're praying for things and we're not seeing things happen, it could very well be, or it is not just could, but it is because again, God's shaping us and preparing us, but he's also aligning our thoughts with his. We've got to take that time to be prepared. We've got to be able, we've got to show up for God each and every day, ready to serve in whatever capacity he wants. We've got to be ready 
and um, teachable, right? We have to show up with a teachable heart. You know, something we always taught the kids as they were growing up and they played baseball and football and, and you know, um, that was pretty much all the sports that they played. But when they were playing their sports, one thing we always, always taught them, always taught them, and it was really funny because I heard my oldest say this not too awfully long ago. But one thing we always taught the kids that if they came home and they were upset about something, they didn't like the way something was going on on the team, or they didn't like maybe a choice that the coaches made, or they're, you know, maybe didn't want to play the position the coach put them in, we would tell them over and over and over again, "Uh uh-uh, you need to be coachable. You need to show up and serve in a way that helps the entire team. This isn't just about you. This is about the entire team. And in order for you to show up and be an asset on that team, you need to be coachable. Well, my friend, it's the same here. You need to be coachable. You need to be teachable. We need to be, right? We need to show up. It may not turn out the way we want. We may have no idea what the next day brings, but we've got to show up and be coachable. We have to be have a teachable heart for God to say, you know what? This isn't about me, right? What do we know about our ultimate calling? Our ultimate calling is to make God known and bring him glory in whatever way he sees fit. And it's always going to be for good and a future. Nothing that's going to bring us harm. Is it going to hurt? Sometimes, yeah, it is. Especially the more we, um, it's going to hurt. The, the longer we sit and refuse to, I'm trying to think about how to say this, refuse to surrender what we want for, for God's desires, right? The longer we, we um, purposely or we, we fight that, the longer it's going to take for us to, to step into that, to, to get what we're praying for, my friends. That's a, that's, that's a truth bomb right there. That is the good, honest truth. You get to decide how long you sit in this. When you show up every day and you say, Lord, teach me. What do you want from me today, Lord? Align my thoughts with your thoughts. Lord, I want this. I've been praying for this. Where are you? I don't see you working. Instead of saying that, say, Lord, you know what? I don't see you working, but I know you are. I may not see it, but I know that you're working because that's what you have promised. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. This is what I'd like. Lord, align my thoughts so that my, or your thoughts become my thoughts. Lord, I want to have a teachable heart for you. Show me how I can serve you today. Show me how I can show up best for you today. But we have to have that teachable heart. We have to be willing and ready to understand that his, our timing, excuse me, is not God's timing. In fact, in 2 Peter chapter three, verse eight and nine, it says this, it says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repent, uh, repentance, excuse me. You see this slowness, has nothing to do with, or or it's not anything bad for us. That slowness or what we perceive as slowness, right? Quote unquote slowness in in that scripture. It's not slow. In God's timing, his timing is always perfect. In God's timing, he is not slow. He is using the time to prepare us. But we've got to have a teachable heart. We have to have a coachable heart and ready, ready to show up and serve in whatever way possible. We have to be patient. And in that waiting, know that he is preparing us for what it is we're asking for. As always, there are so many examples in the Bible of this, but one of them that really comes to mind is Abraham and Sarah. How many years did they pray for a baby? How many years I I believe if I remember correctly, it was over 25 years that they prayed for a baby. And at 99 years old, God shows up and says, hey, I'm going to make you the father of all the nations. Now, I don't know about you, but after 25 years of praying, I would have been frustrated. 
I may have given up. I would have certainly tried to step in just like Sarah did and, and kind of um, um, just kind of tweak it or, or push it along, right? Because what Sarah did is she went to her maid and she said, her, her servant, and she said, listen, I want you to go and um, allow my husband, right? I want you to have my husband's, husband's baby, right? So she wasn't waiting on God's perfect timing. Now, did God take that mistake or that, um, that her frustration while she was waiting and do something good with it? Absolutely. He always does. But the thing is, is Sarah was impatient. She wasn't trusting God's timing. Ah, friends, there are so many examples in the Bible. So, so, so many examples in the Bible. I have my little friend jumping in. Can you hear her on there? <laughs> little pitter patter, pitter patter. Hey girl. Um, anyway, um, um, so many examples in the Bible of people like you and me, people like you and me who get frustrated in the waiting, who are impatient waiting for God's perfect timing. Abraham and Sarah were no different, but God delivered. After 25 years of praying for them, after or for praying for a child, after 25 years, at 99, actually, I think there were 100, I think um, Abraham was 100 years old at this point. He had a baby. He had his first baby. God will do what he promises. We just have to learn how to trust in his timing. We have to learn how to be patient in his timing. We have to show up and say, all right, Lord, teach me what it is you want me to learn in this moment. Teach me what it is you want me to learn as we wait, as I wait for what it is I'm praying for. Help me align my thoughts so that your thoughts become my thoughts thoughts, Lord. It's powerful. It's powerful when we start to change the way we pray, pray, when we start to change the way we show up for God. It's powerful when we take and make the ultimate calling, you know, putting God's kingdom first, our number one priority. When we do that, does it make it easy? Absolutely not. Do you think it was easy for Abraham and Sarah to wait for 25 years while everyone around them was getting pregnant, was having children? No, it doesn't mean it's easy, but it gives us more clarity and it gives us more encouragement and motivation to keep praying, to keep showing up, even when it feels like God isn't listening. Friend, in this waiting, while we're waiting, right? This is his timing. We're waiting for his timing to be fulfilled. Or is that the right way to say that? When we're waiting for that, here's what I want you to know. We have to be patient, excuse me, patient and persistent, right? We have to be patient and persistent while we wait for God and his will, while we wait for what it is we've been praying for. I love this Bible verse. Let's talk about this for just a moment. This is Psalm chapter 37, verse 34. And again, I'm going to read from the voice translation. And this is what it says. Wait for the eternal. Keep to his path. Mind his will. He will come for you, exalt you. You will inherit the land. Before your very eyes, you will see the end of the wicked. Let me repeat that, my friend, because it is so incredibly important. Wait for the eternal. Keep to his path. Mind his will. He will come for you, exalt you. You will inherit the land. Before your eye, your very eyes, you will see the end of the wicked. Now, what does mind his will, uh, excuse me, will mean? It's a, it means keep his way. Keep his way. If you look up, one of the things I do uh, often as I'm writing and creating things is I pull up something called power thesaurus. And I look at what other words, right? You know, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I love to look up the meaning of words. And I also like to look up um, just synonyms, right? The words that are similar so that I get a better understanding. So mind his will, when I looked that up, when I looked up mind or keep in the uh, the th uh, Schmidt, sorry, having a, I need to do a blooper reel. I totally need to do a blooper reel, don't I? I need to keep track of those. But when I looked up the word keep or mind in that thesaurus, excuse me, it means this. Let me just read these to you. Maintain, hold, stay, remain, persevere, 
What are we to do? We are to maintain his will. We are to maintain his path. We are to hold his path. We are to stay his path. We are to remain on his path. We are to persevere while we're waiting. This isn't easy stuff, my friend. It's not easy stuff, but what can you do in the meantime? What can you do while you are waiting for his perfect timing? Oh my goodness, thank him because he knows what's best for you. From your perspective, you're seeing that you are ready right this minute. I know I've been there over and over and over again. But from his perspective, thank goodness, thank goodness that it's, it's on his timing. Because from his perspective, he knows what he has planned for us. And until we're ready for it, because in his great love and mercy, he is not going to let us step into that unprepared. So we can thank God that he knows what's best for us. We can thank God that he is preparing us in this moment or for what we're praying for, excuse me, we can ask that he help us remain steadfast, right? To mind his will, to remain and persevere. We can thank him for that and ask for that help because we can't do it on our own, my friends. We, we need that help, that strength, that endurance that comes from him. What's the other thing we can do? We can ask that he, that he align, and I've mentioned this already, we can ask him to help us align our thoughts with his. Friends, that's one of the most powerful. There are lots of, one of these days I'm going to do a podcast episode on some of the most powerful things you can pray about, um, like some of the most powerful things you can do to pray. I need to put that in my list because one of those things is asking that he align our thoughts with his. That's a really powerful prayer. You want to start seeing transformation in your life. What you do is you choose and you ask God to help him align your thoughts with his. I'm telling you what, that's where transformation begins to happen. That's where transformation begins to happen. Man. You know what? I just had this aha moment just before I started recording today. Wow. Just before I started recording uh, today, uh, this episode, um, I was in a coaching call with someone and it wasn't one. I usually have better. It, it was a struggle for me because she's dealing with something that, um, uh, such a dear woman. Uh, oh my gosh. I just, um, loved connecting with her for the first time. Um, but she was really struggling with something. She is really struggling with something. And I just had this aha moment of, I need to have her pray that prayer. Lord, help me align your thoughts, my thoughts with yours. Just had that aha moment. I'm just sharing that with you. That has nothing to do with our, our um, episode today. But I just, I, I walked away from that uh, coaching call a little frustrated, not with her by any means, but more with myself. I'm just like, okay, what can I, what can I do? I'm very much a cheerleader. I'm an Enneagram seven. I want to motivate. I want to encourage. I want to stand there with you and help you walk out this hard and painful life. I want to be there for you. And sometimes, you know, it just goes to show we don't have all the answers. And I just didn't have all the answers for her today. And so that was really frustrating for me. But I just, as I was saying that to you about asking God to align our thoughts with yours, that is exactly what, as soon as I'm done recording, I'm going to type that out and send that off to her today because that was just kind of an epiphany. So, okay, I had a little squirrel moment. Let's come on back and let's move on with number three. So there are three things we're talking about today as far as what to do when it feels like God isn't listening. Number one is remembering that he is working even when you can't see it. Number two is trusting his timing, that, his, that our timing is not his timing, right? And number three, what you can do while you're waiting is draw closer to God. You see, I think so often, and I will tell you early on, before I really started to have a relationship with God, when I would get frustrated, things weren't going the way I wanted. I was fighting tooth and nail to get, you know, I wanted it. I wanted something and I wanted it just like this, precisely like this. I would get so frustrated. And you want to know the first thing I do is turn away from God. Well, he's not listening. 
He's not answering my prayers. He must not care about me. This must not be what he wants for me. Have you thought of any of those things? But you see, what we need to do is in those times is draw closer to God. When we're struggling with any type of frustration, any type of hardship, instead of turning away from God, and by the way, when we've made mistakes and sinned, oh, that's really hard. We, want to, we need to draw closer to God. What we want to do is turn away from him, but we need to draw closer to God, right? So while we're waiting and while we're waiting for him to fulfill and, and answer our prayers, we want to draw closer to him. You see, that time, that waiting is an opportunity to draw closer to God. Hmm. That hardship, that struggle, that thing you are praying for, that is the perfect time. That is a great opportunity for you to draw closer to God. So how do you do that? You dig into the Bible more. You pray. You get consistent, right? Persistent and consistent about your time with God. And like we talked about in when it, um, last week about praying, right? We talked about the un- or excuse me, unrealistic expectations surrounding prayer. And we talked about we've got to be persistent and consistent about praying with God, about inviting him in every single day, right? And all throughout the day about inviting him into each situation. And when we're in the waiting, while we're waiting for what it is we're praying for, we draw closer to God. We keep praying, right? We get into the Bible, listen to praise and worship music. I can't tell you how many times I've been frustrated. I've been mad. I've been angry. And you start listening to praise and worship music. And I'm telling you, my friend, oh, it does something in your soul, in your heart. It's incredible. Now, listen, if you have not already, be sure to subscribe to my playlist. Um, I've got a Spotify playlist. It's praise and worship songs. You can go to footprintsofinspiration.com slash worship music, and you can subscribe to that. It's totally free. You just start following it or subscribe to it. However it works. I'm not sure. One of those techie things. Yeah. You just hit it and you follow or subscribe, but hop on over and do that because it is so incredibly powerful. By the way, if you're out running around, don't worry. I'll put the link in the show notes so you'll have it. But the Draw, draw closer to God through prayer, through Bible study, through worship music, my friend. Setting your mind on him throughout the day. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to grow closer to God. Even when you're frustrated and you're tired and you're weary. Not just even, but, but, but more so because of those things. Friend, I have a question for you. What if... This time of waiting, what if it's actually because you're still trying to do things in your own strength? What if you're trying, you're fighting tooth and nail to do it in your own strength? What if instead this was God's way of saying, hey, daughter, here I am. Hey, daughter, this fight isn't your fight. It's mine, right? Second Chronicles chapter 20, um, when King Jehoshaphat and his army were up against a big, mighty battle. And he went to God in prayer, right? He was distraught. He had no idea how he was going to, uh, how they would survive this battle. Because from their perspective, like so many times with you and I, And our perspective, through their perspective, there was absolutely no way that they were going to win this battle. And God says, ah, but this battle isn't yours, but mine. What if this waiting is going on because you are refusing to surrender what you want for God's desires? What if this waiting is because you're still trying to do things in your own strength. When God is saying, this isn't your battle, daughter. This is my battle. I want you to take up, right? Stand up and watch me take the victory. What if that's what God's saying? 
Friend, timing, waiting for God, doesn't mean that he isn't listening. Waiting for God in his perfect timing is because is because he's preparing us. He's getting us to align our thoughts with his. And he's preparing us for what it is we're asking for. And so what you're going to do, what you want to do in this time is draw closer to him. Draw closer to him, my friend. Use this as an opportunity. Instead of thinking, why, why, why? How about thinking? Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, God. What about instead of focusing on the destination, we focus on the journey? What if we we show up with a teachable heart each and every day? And instead of focusing on what it is we've got, you know, we've got our eyes trained on that destination, on that goal. What if today instead, we just sat in the moment and enjoyed the moment that he has with us right now. What if today you surrendered what you thought this should look like? How soon you thought your prayer should be answered and instead focus on just showing up and being here with God today with a teachable heart. Completely changes your focus. Completely changes your focus, my friend. And let me tell you, that's when you start to see a transformation in your life. Mm, mm. So listen, if you find yourself in a season, season of waiting, if you find yourself in a season where you're feeling like, you know what, God just isn't listening to what I'm praying for. He's not answering my prayers. I want to invite you to jump over and uh, jump over to footprintsofinspiration.com slash free goals. That's footprintsofinspiration.com slash free goals. Again, if you're out running around, don't worry about it. I'll put the link in the show notes. Hop on over there, go to free goals. And what I'll do is I've got a 30-day aligning your goals with God's will scripture challenge. This is going to help you align your thoughts with his, right? To make his thoughts your own, to make his goals your own goals. And so I've got an entire 30-day scripture challenge for you, totally free. What you do, you sign up for it and I will send you Uh, a quick email each morning. This is not an email that's going to be have all kinds of lessons uh, in them or anything like that is going to just be the Bible verse because I want you to focus on the verse. Okay, focus on the verse. So um, hop on over, do that. I'll send you a new one each day for 30 days. As you learn, as you as you go to God in this season of waiting with a teachable heart and say, Lord, make your thoughts my thoughts. I want to align my goals with you, Lord. I want to align my thoughts with yours, Lord. And that by, that scripture study, free scripture study is going to help you do that, help you really get rooted in God as far as doing that while you're waiting. So friend, I hope this blessed you today. I love talking about this stuff. You know, I get extremely passionate about talking about God and really, really helping you through that. Um, or, you know, the hard times in life and all the things, right? All the things that we struggle with for sure. So if this blessed you today, would you do me a favor? My mission is to get out there and help as many women as possible learn how to not just read the Bible, which is crucial. It's very, very important, but also take and apply God's word to their life. I want to help as many women as possible learn how to just really align their thoughts and desires with God's. So if you'll do me a favor and just share this episode with a friend, I would truly, truly appreciate it. And then friend, I'll meet you back here next week with another episode of a Faithful God podcast.